Well, hello, and welcome to the HTML5 lecture series at SNHU. I'm Tom Adamson, visiting professor, and this is lecture 17, and this is on event attributes. Well, first thing you might ask yourself is, What is an event? Now, we should know what an attribute is. Remember, an attribute is something that's inside an HTML element that modifies or enhances an HTML element. And an attribute, uh, if you recall, has two parts. It has the, the variable, and then it has the, the value. Uh, so this person here might be asking that. And of course, they would have a thing like this, asking that question. You know, what is an event? And there he is, asking that. Well, an event is when something happens. And as you recall, we talked about events before, and there were two kinds of events. One was an external event, and the other one was an internal event. And the external event is when I externally did something, like I moved the mouse, or I touched the keyboard, or I talked, I said something, or I touched the screen, depending on the device that's being used. An internal event is when something inside the computer itself happens. That's the internal event. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna look at the screen, and, um, and I'll, we're gonna start uh, at, at one of my favorite resources, which is W3Schools, and I'm on their home page now, and what I want to go do is I want to go into search here and I want to look at event, E-V-E-N-T. And I'm going to go ahead and click on it. And when I do that, I see I have Doom event objects, jQuery, uh, HTML event attributes. This is the one I want, the third one down, HTML event attributes. And I click on that. And then I'm going to enlarge the page so I can see it. And then there's a, a little discussion here. It says, HTML4 added the ability to let events trigger actions in a browser, like starting a JavaScript when a user clicks on an, on an element. And to learn more programming events, please, more about programming events, visit their JavaScript tutorial. And let's look at the event attributes. Here's the event attributes uh, for the window uh, uh, element. Uh, on after print, and new means it's, it's new to HTML5. On before print, on before unload, on error, on load. I could go down and read every one of these, but it, it, the video would be so long, it would be ridiculous. You can go to the site and you can see them yourself. The point is, is that there are all kinds of event attributes just for the window itself. If I look at forms, now forms we haven't talked about yet, but a form is something that you fill out and you submit. And these are all the event attributes that can be used inside the form element. Um, and then here's keyboards events, on key down, on key press, on key up. And then here's mouse events, on click, on double click, on drag, on drag in, on drag enter, on drag leave, on drag over, on drag start, on drop. Uh, in other words, you can drag elements now like pictures and other things. On mouse down, on mouse move, on mouse up. Media events on a board on can play. And these are media events where you can in, embed them in uh, the audio element, uh, embed element, image element, object element, and video elements. Okay. On load, on start, on seek, on suspend, on waiting, and so on. So as we see, there are all kinds of events that can be used uh, in our, our elements. So what I'm gonna do now it's staying on the screen. I'm going to give an example of an event. And I'm going to right click. I'm just on a folder here. 
I'm going to come to new, and I'm going to come to text document, and I'm going to, I'll just call this my event. Okay. All right. So what I've got now is I have, I, if I double left click on this, on, on this, I get a web page now that has nothing on it because I didn't put anything in the web document. So to get the web document, if I right click and I open it with my favorite editor, Notepad, there it is. And I see I don't have anything here. What it, what it says I can do, it says I can take an element and do an on click. So what I'm going to do with an element, I'll just take the uh, H1 element and I'll put here click me. Whoops, okay, click me. And with an explanation mark, and then I'll close off the H1. Okay, so let's see what happens. I'm going to come here. This is my web document. I'm going to save it. It's going through the browser. I'm going to refresh it. There it is. Click me. I click it, and nothing happens. Well, it does change that, but nothing exciting happens. So what I needed to do is I needed to add a, an event attribute here. And the attributes are always added in the opening tag, which is going to be right here. That's the opening tag. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on, click, on click, okay? And now I'm going to save it again. I did a control S. And I'm going to do this again. And still nothing happens. What I need is I need something to happen when I click it. And I need some code for it to happen. So I need to go back to the board now. I need to go back to the board and explain something. So we're going to have to come back over here. What I need is some code. So that when I click on that, it goes to the code, and the code can now make something happen. I need some JavaScript. And I, in order to, to do that, one way of doing that is using a Java script function. Now you might ask yourself, what's a JavaScript function? A function is a, a group of code that I made up or somebody else made up, a bunch of code that I can keep like in a box, and whenever I need it, I can use it. So functions are really cool with a capital K uh, because there's, there's all kinds of things I can do with them. So what a function looks like in JavaScript, a function has two major parts. One part is called the header. And the other part of the function is called the body. So I have the header of the function here, and I have the body. The header, what the header does, the header identi identifies the function. Because I can have many different functions, I need some way of identifying them. The body contains all of the code used by the function. Now, here's how this works. Let's look at the header, the header of, of, the func of the function. In the header of any function for JavaScript, there is a reserved word called function, F-U-N-C-T-I-O-N. This right here is a reserved JavaScript word, which means it can't be used for anything else. 
It must be in lowercase. So anytime I'm going to create a function, the very first thing I must do is create the header, and there's a, there's a reserved word that says function, and that means something to the programming language, JavaScript. It's got to be uh, lowercase just like that. Now, the next thing what comes is an identifier. An identifier is a word that I give the function so that it's unique. And I can give it any word I want. I can give it do it. Okay? In the identifier, the identifier goes right here. And I'm going to call it do it. I'm going to call it do. All right. So this is an identifier, so I called it uh, do it. And if I make another function, I want to use a different identifier. I could, could call it do it too. There's some rules about identifiers, uh, and we'll go over those rules later on. Don't worry about that for now, but just know that this is the identifier. Following the identifier is always parentheses, like this. And this, these parentheses, they are called the argument. It's not like anybody's fighting, but that's where we can put stuff. We can put values in here if we want. We're not going to do that for now. Then the next thing in the body, in order to define the body, that takes care of the header. In order to define the body, I need to have, uh, use the squiggly things. I need to have this squiggly thing this way. And then all my code's going to go in here, whatever my code is. When I'm finished with the code, I need the squiggly thing that looks the other way, like that. So all the code that this function is going to have goes in here. I can now save this function, and then I can use it anytime I want. I can also take this function and email it to other programmers if they want to use it. Sometimes what happens with the function is this squiggly thing is put up here, uh, ending the header. Don't worry about that. I'm going to show it this way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a, uh, there are two kinds of functions. There are custom functions. And a custom function is made by you. We're going to make a custom function. And then the other kind of function there is are pre-made functions. And they're made by someone else. What we're going to use in here inside our function, our custom function, we're going to use a pre-made function that was made by the people that created JavaScript. And the pre-made function that we're going to be using is this. It's going to be alert, A-L-E-R-T, and then there's going to be parentheses here. This is how I call a, a pre-made function, alert, A-L-E-R-T, and inside quotation marks I'm going to put from the function. Close, close quotation marks, close parentheses, and put a semicolon. So what will happen when I use this function, all it will do is call another function that's been pre-made, and there will be a pop-up win window that will say from the function. Okay, that's the idea of what we're going to do. So what we need to do now is go back to the monitor, please, and we'll try that. I'm going to take this guy right here. I'm going to move him down. I'm going to put my function right here. So I start the function with the keyword F-U-N-C-T-I-O-N. It must be in lowercase. And I'm going to call it do it, do I-T. And there's the argument. Okay. I could put uh, the, the left squiggly thing here to start the body of the function. A lot, of, a lot of people do it that way, and then this would end the body of the function, and then I put my code right in between these two things. Okay. However, the way I like to do it, I like to do it where the squiggly thing is here. It really makes no difference which way you do it. It's, it's up to you. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the pre-made function, A-L-E-R-T, and I'm going to put, uh, what is it I'm going to put? I'm going to put uh, from the function, F-R-O-M, uh, the function. Okay, like that, like that, like that, and like that. Okay, so now what I need to do here, this is the element, and what I'm going to use is, is I'm going to use an attribute that is a, an event attribute. So on click, what's going to happen on click? Well, on click has to equal something. Remember, that's what attributes are. Attributes are value pairs. There's the attribute identifier, which is on click, and there's this value. So its value is going to be, leave it, I'm going to refresh it, and when I refresh it, what do I see at the top here? I see my function. I don't want to see my function. Why? What's going on? Well, what's going on is I didn't tell the browser that this stuff right here, this is not HTML. I didn't tell them that. I didn't tell the browser that this is actually script. So how do I do that? Well, I need to have a, uh, an element to tell it that. Okay, Script starts here and script ends here. So what I'm telling the browser is that, hey dude, from here to here is script. Don't treat it as HTML. In other words, don't show it to me. Just hold the stuff there until I need it. Now when I've ended script, what you see now, this is HTML. Okay, that's cool. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to file and save. I'm going to come back here and refresh. And now I don't see the function. Why? Because I told it. This is script. Now what I'm going to do is click on click me. And look, did you see the pop-up window happen? It says from the function. So what I did is I showed that the on click will call the function do it. And the function do it has inside itself what it's going to do. It's going to call a pre-made function called alert, which causes a pop-up box to happen that says from the function. Okay, now what I can do with this on click, I could go on mouse over. Wasn't that another one? Let's try on mouse over. M-O-U-S-E-O-V-E-R. Let's see what happens now. Control S to save it. Okay, here I go. I'm go I have to refresh this. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm simply, oh, I moved the mouse over that, look what it did. I didn't click. Move the mouse over that again, I didn't click. Now, one of the common things that I use, one of the common elements that I use for clicking on something, generally you don't click on text, but I can use other elements. Let's try, let's try an element where it's an input, because we talked about inputs, type, and let's make it a button. This is an attribute, is it not? Sure. And then what we're going to do is put on a uh, click. Now well, let's put what the value is. And the value of the button is going to be a uh, click me. Like that, okay. And that, that'll end with the quotation marks. And then I'm going to put on click equals to what? It's going to equal the function, do it, right? Okay. And keep in mind that the input is a void element, so I close it like that. Let me stretch this out so hopefully it makes sense a little bit better. So what I've done here is I have an input element. The type is going to be a button. What's going to appear on the button, the value, is going to be click me. When I click on it, it'll do do it. What did I leave out? Up! Oh, I left out the parentheses. i got to have the parentheses in there or I won't know it's a function. Okay. So I come here and I save this now. I come over here and I refresh the browser to look at the, at the output. And there's my nice button. I moved over, click me, so it came up. But now there's the button that I created. And when I click on it, it says from the function. So I could go on and on and show even more kinds of things with this. But uh, hopefully you get the idea of what it is that we're looking for. So, one of the things that you should do, I have to get up here and then go to W3 Schools. One of the things that you should do is go to W3 Schools, look at the different uh, uh, events that they have as attributes, uh, try some of the samples to see what they do, and then know where you can use this as, as a reference. Okay, I need to go back to the, to the board here. 
Okay, that's it for this lecture 17 on event attributes. Thank you for attending.